loudspeakers need to lose cabinet resonances according to general high-end knowledge. But what if someone would tell you that you should prevent floor movements to enter your loudspeakers? The UK company Townsend was founded in 1975 by Max Townsend, who sadly passed away recently at the age of 78 on December 31, 2021. I had not heard of him until lately when the Dutch distributor RMR Sound Systems asked me to review the Townsend Seismic Podium for loudspeakers. To be honest, I didn't know what to think of it. Townsend has plateaus to place turntables on. That makes sense given the mechanical construction. There are plateaus for digital sources like CD players, network players and DACs, which makes sense too. CD mechanisms are almost as critical as turntables since they have to read a 5 micron track at a speed of 5 km per hour, 3 miles per hour. And clock crystals are not only very sensitive to temperature changes, but also to mechanical vibrations. But for loudspeakers? What is there to gain with loudspeaker systems? Well, if there are vibrations in the cabinet, a set of correctly dimensioned dampers might convert that energy into heat. A mass spring system, like the seismic products, decouples above its resonance frequency. At the resonance frequency it will self-resonate what we don't want and below the resonance frequency it doesn't decouple at all, so there is no point in using it. In a video on the web, see the notes for a link, Townsend shows how a mass spring system like used in a seismic podium works using a spring and a pink elephant. Since we don't want resonances in the audio band, you want the resonance frequency to be below the audio band. Townsend has chosen a resonance frequency below 3 Hz. Let me show you a small snippet of the video since it's very illustrating. Now, if I hold this steady and stop him bouncing, I can move my hand up and down slowly and the elephant will follow my hand. Now this is a transmissibility of one. What my hand does, the elephant does. Okay, but if I increase the frequency of the oscillation, you can see I get to a resonance point where a little tiny input gives a huge output where the elephant is bouncing really, really quite a lot. But then if I go up in frequency with my hand to here, a very high frequency, you can see there the elephant is holding still and my hand is going up and down quite fast. If you are interested, please do watch the entire video for Townsend's explanation goes further. He has stated that our house carries small amounts of seismic noise from sources like traffic, volcano eruptions, industrial machines, the washing machine and the likes. And he might be right. A week ago there was an eruption of an underwater volcano near Tonga and that was measurable in the Netherlands despite its 16,500 kilometers or 10,300 miles distance. According to Townsend's paper, Earthquake on Hi-Fi, there is a seismic activity around the world 24-7. In this graph from the same paper, these seismic activities are plotted. It is a seismograph readout from the British Geological Survey seismograph, measured in Swindon, England, on January 27, 2015. From this it was concluded that most living rooms will be vibrating with an amplitude of on average 10 microns. In a 100 mm driver, a 5 kHz signal at 40 dB SPL at 1 meter will cause a cone movement of 0.01 microns. This supposedly will have a clear effect on the sound quality. The seismic podium decouples the speakers from the floor they are standing on preventing speaker movement. You will find a link to the paper in the notes below this video on YouTube. How do you make a spring 
absorb vibrations above 5 Hz. From the demo Townsend gave, it might be clear that the resonance frequency depends on the mass, the weight of the pink elephant, and how stiff the spring is. The lesser the mass, the higher the resonance frequency, and vice versa. And the stiffer the spring, the lower the resonance frequency, and vice versa. Like in a car, a shock absorber is used to dampen movement. This is done using a gaiter of rubber-like material around the spring to seal it airtight with the exception of a small hole that lets the air escape at a given speed. This is best seen on the seismic pod that can be placed below audio gear. There is a footplate that can be adjusted in height to compensate for an unevenness of the floor or cabinet. Above that the spring base plate that is raised or lowered by the foot plate, above that the spring in the gator and above that the top plate in which the top end or the platform is screwed. Here we also find the small hole that lets air in and out. The combination of the spring stiffness, the mass of the device on top plus spring loaded mass of the pot define the resonance frequency. The size of the hole defines how the system is dampened. It might be clear that there needs to be a large number of different versions to match a large range of devices. And there is. For the seismic podium on review here there are six different versions for loudspeakers between 5 and 200 kilos. The first thing I did is place the speakers on the podium. Wrong. If you don't start the right way, you keep compensating one air with the other. You first have to place the podium so that the speaker can be placed on top at the correct position. But don't place the speaker yet. Check if the large adjustment knobs are fully clockwise, which is how they normally come from the factory. Get a spirit level, I use the Carpenter app by iHandysoft on an iPhone and level the stage area by adjusting the feet. When done you can use the spanner to fixate the feet by locking the counter nut. Then place the speaker on a podium with the center of gravity of the speaker close to the geometrical center of the podium. In general the front will be heavier due to the drivers in the front. The baffle that holds the drivers might be of heavy material as well. If you want to establish the center of gravity place the speaker on a rolling pin broomstick or equal and while holding it roll it front to back until it is in balance. Use masking tape to mask that point for reference for that's the center of gravity front to back. In most cases the left to right center of gravity will be in the middle but if you have doubts for instance if one or more drivers are mounted off center use the same technique. It might be clear that this procedure should be done with the utmost care. With heavier speakers it can be a two person job. Now place the speakers as instructed. When the speaker is placed on the podium you will notice some vertical movement. When stable the podium should not touch the bottom. It should be supported by the springs only and thus move free to some degree. If not you should turn the adjustment knobs counterclockwise until they come free. If the front two springs touch the bottom, turn only the knobs on the front counterclockwise and vice versa. Never turn all four knobs in one go. Do the front first and then when needed the rear knobs. Now the speaker should appear to float with no solid contact between the suspended parts and the parts on the floor. The final step is to level the speaker using the spirit level. This is a bit of a tedious job. Make adjustment on the knobs on one side, rock the speaker slightly and let it settle and then repeat until it is level. It is important not to adjust one knob only. If the speaker is lower on the right side use the two right knobs. If it's backwards use the back knobs and so on. Repeat this until you have the speaker level and the pots not touching the fixed part of the pots. Take this very seriously for it clearly impacts the sound quality.
Given the investment, I tested the seismic podiums in my setup 1A, but I could have taken setup 1B. The Airacoustic AX520 amp drives the Audiophysic Scorpio loudspeakers. Connected to the amp is the Cord Dave DAC that receives its signal from the Cord Hugo M scaler. The Uelic Aries G2, used as rune endpoint, is connected to the M scaler and talks to the network over the Network Acoustics Eno system and the SOTM SNH10G switch. The Intel NUC runs Rune Rock on a M.2 SSD and has music stored on an 8TB Samsung SSD. Added to that are the subscription to both Tidal and Cobus. Rune is controlled on an Apple iPad Pro. Although I always try to have a blank opinion when starting a review, I noticed this time I had some reservations. Since I started wrong setting up the podiums, I was not fully convinced the first time around. I heard the potential, but the return on investment was too low. So I started again, this time following the one page manual. What happened then turned around my scepticism in 10 seconds. Resolution went up, the stereo image improved further, lows were better controlled, it was just a step further to reality. And it is close to the magnitude of adding the chords upsampler to a system. This is great and fully worth the money. What kind of money are we talking about? Well, that depends on the size of your loudspeakers. There are five podium sizes and they range from 1680 to 4680 euros, including VAT. My Scorpios needed size 2 with C pots for a weight of 27 kilos. The Dutch price for this size is 2040 euros. In setup 1A, the price would not be a shopstopper. What is in my case is the aesthetics committee that vetoed the addition, which is the first time it used its veto rights. The large pots with knobs sticking out on all four corners of the loudspeaker look rather industrial. Many will like the looks, including me, but since the setup 1A is in the living room and is the first piece of gear that was blocked, well, you get my point. If you consider the purchase of the seismic podiums, I can only advise them and be jealous. And on that bombshell we come to the end of this video. There will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to the video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.